Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today. Before we begin today's webinar, Osteoporosis Canada acknowledges the land that our office is located in Toronto or on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Awashnaubek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse nations, Inuit and Métis. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Hello, and thank you for joining us. My name is Tracy Napoli, Director of Fund Development and Marcom at Osteoporosis Canada, and I will be your host for today. Thank you to thinkbeef.ca for their partnership in helping make this cook along happen. In addition to everyone who will be cooking along today, we have Zoom attendees, and we are also live streaming this webinar on Osteoporosis Canada's Facebook page. So a big welcome to everyone who is watching. This webinar will provide general information about cooking and food knowledge. It is not intended as individualized health or nutrition advice. So if you have questions about nutrition, consult a physician or a registered dietitian. If you have questions during the webinar, and if you're watching on Zoom, you can enter questions by clicking the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. And if you're watching on Facebook and have a question, just pop the question in the comment section and we'll do our best to answer as many questions as we can during the webinar within the time available. Nutrition is a key component for strong and healthy bones, as well as in the prevention and management of osteoporosis. Calcium, vitamin D, and protein are essential nutrients for proper bone health. For many people, including older adults, Oftentimes, people stop making meals with all the nutrients they need for good health, including bone health. Osteoporosis Canada is working to provide strategies, new ideas, and recipes to help you get the bone-building nutrients needed to keep bones strong and healthy. Osteoporosis Canada recommends including protein daily in your diet to benefit muscle and bone health. For overall health, food, Canada's Food Guide recommends including protein at every meal. Some examples are beef, eggs, fish, poultry, pork, tofu, legumes, nuts, milk, yogurt, and cheese. Beef has many essential nutrients packed into each small serving and provides nutrients that are difficult to get from other foods like iron, zinc, and vitamin B12. Eggs are an excellent source of protein and contain healthy fats and many nutrients like vitamins A, D, E, choline, iron, and folate. So let's get cooking. Today's featured recipe is fast fry steak and eggs, a hearty protein packed one skillet meal, which is perfect for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And each serving has 42 grams of protein and 225 milligrams of calcium. Now you can get this recipe or other recipes on the Osteoporosis Canada website by visiting osteoporosis.ca forward slash recipes. I'll be sharing the link to this recipe in the chat and in the comment section on Facebook. It's now my pleasure to welcome Emily Richards, a, prof a professional home economist, freelance food writer, chef, and she is the author and co-author of 10 cookbooks. Emily also writes and develops recipes for print and online publication that includes everyday cooking and healthy eating and can be found on TV, radio, and webcasts just like this one. So welcome, Emily, and a big welcome to all our Cook Along cooks today. Hey, everybody. Glad to see you. And thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining me and cooking in your kitchen. And for those joining the webinar, um, thanks for joining us for this um, fun cook along and easy cooking along, might I add, because this is a fast dinner breakfast or lunch, as Tracy mentioned. And one of my favorites, when I worked in restaurants, steak and eggs was very popular on the menu. Um, and you can make it at home quite easily. So our cook along participants have the groceries at home ready to cook. And um, they, you guys can ask questions as we go along. So feel free to unmute yourself and you can ask. If anyone in the webinar has any questions, please feel free and um, we'll try to get to your questions as our time allows. So let's talk steak. So this recipe is fast fry steak and eggs. So you might go into the grocery store and start looking for fast fry steaks and you might not find them. So what is a fast fry steak? A fast fry steak is basically exactly what it sounds like. It's a steak that cooks quickly because it's thin. 
Um, and also it comes in a few different shapes and sizes. And by that, I mean, it's different cuts of beef that we're looking at. So our participants got a top sirloin steak. So that's what I have in front of me here. It's cut, it's covered with a little bit of plastic wrap. And what we're gonna do is actually convert this into some fast fry steaks. So in order to help us out, what we're gonna do is actually test this into the freezer just while we prep all our other vegetables because that's gonna firm it up a little bit and make it easier for us to cut it into four little steaks, okay? So I'm gonna pop mine into the freezer. You guys put yours into the freezer as well. And we'll come back to it. The trick usually is having that space, like in my freezer, so that it closes. Um, so we can't forget that in there and we won't because it's the main part of our recipe. So I have my recipe in front of me. As much as I like to say that it's an easy recipe, I tend to forget things. So I always have it in front of me, going through and making sure that we have all the ingredients. So what I like to do when I'm cooking to make things a little bit easier is work with all my vegetables first and get all my mise en place ready. So basically cutting up all my vegetables and preparing them. So this is a great opportunity if you want to practice your chopping skills um, or, you know, you want to sharpen your, your, your cutting skills for vegetables. This is the perfect opportunity. So we are bulking up the sauce of this steak and egg because we need a little bit of moisture to cook the eggs in. This is a one skillet meal. So not only are we pan frying the steak in here, the sauce, the eggs, everything gets cooked in here. So it's little cleanup. So we're gonna start off with our onions, garlic, and pepper. So let's start off with our onion first, and we're gonna chop it. And basically, I'm gonna work along with you. So my onion's pretty small, okay? If you have a larger onion, you can use half, but we really wanna build flavor right from the beginning, and onions and garlic always do that. So there's a root end and a stem end of the onion. I want you to kind of just trim off that stem end, okay? So just a little slice will do. And then I want you to hold on tight and cut it in half. And then just peel off that outer soft skin, okay? And I like to do this because then that gives us two flat sides to start chopping up our onion. Now, we are actually using petite cut tomatoes today, which are those small diced tomatoes. So. The goal is to kind of have everything about the same size. So when we go to dice our onion, we're gonna to try to chop it a little bit smaller, but if it's a little larger, not to worry because it'll, we'll just cook it a little bit longer. So if you want to practice your finessing of chopping, onions are great because we, I tend to use them every day. Okay, so we're gonna start off with one half of the onion. I'm just gonna scooch this over a bit so I have a little bit more space. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is make lengthwise cuts, not all the way, I still have that root end intact on this side, but I'm not going all the way down, but I'm just cutting. And the closer you make these cuts, the smaller your pieces of onions will be, okay? And then you can hold it down just like so, and then wiggle your knife across. Again, not going all the way to the back, okay? So you can see I can lift that up a little bit. And then once it's all together, I'm gonna move my knife down, hold on to my onion, and then just rock my knife to get nice, fine, little dice like so. And then that root end that I was holding on to is just gonna go into the compost, okay? So we'll do the other half. And if you want, you can, um, if you have um, a plate or a bowl, that you wanna add your vegetables to, you definitely can do that. I'm just gonna kind of keep them on my cutting board off to the side so that I am able to um, have them all at hand. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing with the other half of the onion. Now, if you love onions, by all means, this could be a large onion in here. You could also use leeks, would be beautiful in this dish. Um, green onions. If you have chives, I still have a ton of chives in my garden. You can grab a bunch and chop those up. They add tons of flavor and they will also give you a little bit of a nice green color as well. Okay. So here's my other half of the onion that I'm dicing up, getting to the end. And then I'm just gonna move that over. Now, Emily, this is great. Emily, yeah. sorry, it's Tracy. I just, I saw Kate, she was 
she was because I think the onions, right? Do you have any tips oh. so that people don't get all teary? <laughs> while they're, or maybe if you need a good cry, it's all good. <laughs> well, it is. Uh, it's Tuesday, right? Tuesday's crying day, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right now. Um, what is happening if you have fresh onions, which you more than likely do. We've just kind of come off crops being harvested. All the onions are pretty much fresh, regardless of um, most of the onions we have are local and they're fresh. So when you cut into them, they definitely will be a little bit more pungent than maybe in February, for example, because they've been around in storage for a while. The other thing is having a nice sharp knife. So it could be signs that you need to sharpen your knife. So Kate, you might need to bring them to my house to get sharpened. Um, and um, the other thing you could always do if no matter what you try, you're always crying, um, you could tuck them into the refrigerator before you start chopping them because that little bit of cold will kind of seal off the cells. Go back to your grade nine science and think of that the cell structure, you're chilling them so when you cut into them, the fumes essentially won't come out as quickly as if they were at room temperature. So there's a few things, but if you want to look really cool, you could always just get those onion goggles and put those on. They're like a suction around your eyes. And um, I've seen lots of people use those too. So, or get somebody else to chop the onions. If you live with somebody else, get them to do the, the dirty work for you. <laughs> All right, so from our onions, we're going to move to garlic. So this recipe calls for three cloves of garlic. Now they could be huge cloves, they could be little cloves. And if you're not a fan of garlic, you could use less cloves. I have one really large clove and a smaller clove. So I'm using two because it makes up the difference for the three, okay? Um, so I love using fresh garlic as opposed to garlic that's been preserved. So you can buy jarred garlic. If you feel comfortable using that, that's totally okay. But I really like the fresh flavor of the fresh garlic. Um, and again, this is fresh in season garlic that kind of has been picked late August. So it will have some potency as well. So what we're gonna do is treat it the exact same way we treated the onion. So I'm just going to just use the side of my knife and kind of just give it a little tap. I don't wanna come down and smash on it hard because I don't wanna lose all the juice from the garlic on the cutting board and then just peel off that papery skin from the garlic clove, okay? And if you have, it's, if it's sticking a little bit, that's a sign again of fresh garlic. You could just use a little paring knife, okay? Like I have here and you can kind of just lift it off like that. So I'm not trimming off, I'm leaving that root end intact. So if you think of a head of garlic, how they grow up like that, the root end is this kind of, this bottom part here. Okay? And that we're gonna do our chopping just like we did with the onion. This is definitely sticky fresh garlic. And then I'm gonna just, I actually just planted my garlic on the weekend um, for next year. So if you haven't got your garlic in the ground yet, get it in there, especially with this hail that's coming today. Um, and I know out West, they got, they got snow. So I hope their, their garlic got in the ground. All right, this one's so sticky. It's coming off, I promise. There we go. And if you want, you can save these um, garlic skins, onion skins, and root ends for your stock, okay? So if you like to make your own stock, then what you can do is have a nice, um, either a Ziploc bag or a bowl or a container that you add all of your, your food scraps to, to make a stock later on, okay? So I'm gonna start with my big clove here so that hopefully you can see it. Um, again, I'm holding it between my fingers and I'm going to make those long cuts like I did with the onion. Okay, and not, try not to go all the way through. Then I'm going to flip it up and make those long cuts again. And then just put it down on its flat side. And then again, just rock my knife to get nice, small, little pieces of garlic as a mint. Now, if you want, it's a little tricky near the end there, okay? If you want it smaller, which you totally can get it smaller, just make that little pile come together and then just rock your knife back and forth. Okay? And then you can add that to your onion pile. 
and I'm going to do our second clove, my second clove here. Okay. Just could like I that. ask now? If what? yeah, I'm sorry. Could I ask a question just about the garlic? Is it um, better to cut it or to use a garlic press if you had a garlic press? If you have a garlic press, you could definitely use a garlic press um, and set it aside. I find that sometimes a lot of the juice gets squished out with the press itself. So, um, but that's totally up to you. You're, you're more than welcome to use the, the press if it's easier. You could also use a rasp. So if you have a microplane, um, that will give you a really fine puree of garlic, which also slightly intensifies the flavor. When you're, when you're chopping it or mincing it, um, there's less surface area, right? So as soon as you puree it, it's all out there. So it tends to get a little bit more potent. So for sure, if you want to use um, a press or a rasp, you can definitely do that. All right, I'm just gonna go back and forth here on this little one and add that to my onion pile. So the reason why we want to get all of our vegetables ready first is because of food safety. When we think about it, we wanna have our nice um, vegetables done, cleaned up, and then we're gonna move on to our steak so that we have a nice clean work surface. And if you need to, if your hands are sticky from the garlic, and my knife is also sticky, this is also a great way to kind of take away some of the garlic smell, is just have the blade away from you and rub your fingers along the blade of the knife. So you're doing two things. You're cleaning off your knife and you're cleaning off your fingers, which is nice, and reducing that slight smell of garlic, although I think uh, it's my natural perfume now for the amount that I use. All right, how are we doing? We got some people relaxing, so onions and garlic are chopped, that's perfect. Which by the way, you're at home if you wanted to pour yourself a drink, by all means, do that. Um, you can always keep it off to the side and you know walk over here and have a drink. If you don't wanna be on camera, it's totally cool. Um, pepper. So we're going to use the yellow pepper, it could be red, green, orange, whatever type of pepper you might have. This could be zucchini, this could be an eggplant, it could be really whatever vegetables that you want that you have in the crisper. We've called for peppers because um, they have great vitamin and mineral value to us. The color is going to be spectacular with the tomatoes, but really this could be kind of a clean out the crisper sauce if you wanted to. So if you have some other vegetables, even leftover roasted vegetables, you can do that in the sauce. So we're gonna cut the pepper. There's lots of ways to cut peppers. So however you feel comfortable, you do not have to cut it this way. I like doing this because it usually doesn't leave a big mess on my cutting board. So I like to just hold it and cut it the quarters off so that the seeds stay in the stem because they're always attached to the stem here in the middle, okay? So once I have that one side exposed, I can just follow that all the way along, okay? and then cut off the end and all my seeds stay intact and I don't have a mess on my cutting board, okay? And you can actually keep the center stem and seeds because if you were to be roasting vegetables and add them to a vegetable broth, they would add really, really nice flavor, okay? Because you'd be straining it off anyway, so it's lovely to have on hand. Now, I'm just gonna check, I can't remember if we chop these, we dice them, so again, the same size that we've been working with, that smaller size, we are going to be doing the peppers with. So anytime you're chopping vegetables, that flat side, so it's not rocking, okay? So the pepper, bell pepper has a curve to it. We want it on the flat side. However, if your knife isn't sharp, you're gonna want it on the other side because your um, sharp knife will easily cut through the skin. But if it's not so sharp, you want to flip it over. So if it's giving you resistance, my knives um, are sharp, so I have no problem going through. But if your knife gives you a little bit of resistance here, flip it over, hold on tight and cut it this way and you should have no problem, okay? So what I'm doing is cutting into strips first before I dice it so that then I can kind of just stack those little strips together, okay? And then create that little dice just like that. So again, just rocking my knife and making those little pieces of pepper, okay? And if I was using another vegetable, I would treat it the same way. I would make sure that I was 
dicing it up so that it's nice and small. And this also gives us a nice little bit of textural difference in the sauce. So it is a little bit of a, a whole meal because we have our vegetables in there as well as our protein. We're doubling up on protein here. So this is definitely um, a wonderful, hearty, protein rich dish. And for those of you that love talking about make aheads and freezers, guess what? This one can be done too. Um, I know you may not think that it could be done, but it can be. I'm all about trying to help out. Although I don't know how much freezer space people have now. I've noticed that a lot of people are starting to get ready for the holidays. So their freezers might start to be getting a little bit more full. All right, so I'm almost done dicing up my pepper here. The other thing you'll notice is that I have all my ingredients out at room temperature outside of our steak that's in the freezer. And that really helps things come together quickly. So if you're wondering about, you know, how you're gonna get dinner ready quickly, one of the things that you can do is kind of have everything out in front of you so that as it's coming together, you know what you've used, especially if you're following a recipe um, and things tend to happen a little bit faster. Okay, so we're done. We're not done our chopping. We want to chop our basil. Okay, let's get that out of the way too. And this could be parsley. This could be cilantro. This could be a little bit of mint would be really nice. So totally up to you. Uh, but I'm going to take the fresh basil leaves and pinch off some of the larger ones. I'm going to save the smaller ones for us to add as garnish later. So we need about three tablespoons. And I'm all about having lots of flavor. So fresh herbs, the more the merrier. So if you chop an extra couple tablespoons, that's totally okay. Okay. Because it'll have more flavor. If you wanted to make this dish again and you didn't have fresh basil, you could use some dried basil in here. Okay, that would that would be lovely. It doesn't have the same sweetness as fresh basil, but it certainly would add some flavor. Um, fresh parsley is always my go-to. So I've just kind of cut the leaves in half and pinched them all together. You can roll them up if you wanted to. And then again, I'm just rocking with my knife, making nice little slivers in the basil. And because we want this chopped, you could leave it like this if you wanted to. It'll be kind of long and wispy. I'm actually gonna turn it a little bit and just give it a couple more chops. With delicate herbs like this, the more you chop, the more surface area is exposed and it starts to, um, it starts to turn brown a little bit quicker because we're exposing it to the air, okay? So I'm gonna just move that aside because we don't need that quite yet, okay? So now we have everything chopped up. So that means I can turn this around and that should have given us enough time for our steak to firm up a bit. So if you want to grab your steak, everyone, how are we doing, Tracy? Are there any questions so far? Or are we? We're doing we well. So you know what? Let's let's explain to everyone why the steak is firming up. Okay, perfect. So we have a top sirloin grilling steak, um, which, as you know, when you buy steak, it can be in different thicknesses. And in our recipe, we called for fast fry steaks. So fast fry steaks are a little bit thinner. So they're usually sometimes very thin. Um, so almost scallopini thin, they could be about half inch thin, but our steaks are closer to three quarter to an inch thick. So that's not quite fast fry. So fast fry means that you can literally kind of brown it on both sides and it's done. Um, in our case, that's pretty much what we're doing, but then we're slipping it back into the sauce to add some flavor to it. Now, top sirloin and strip loin, for example, are grilling cuts of meat that you would purchase. You could add a little marinade for flavor, but they're a nice tender steak, great to throw on the grill for barbecuing or in a pan to sear on both sides and enjoy as a steak. So because we have a whole steak, we need to create a fast fry steak. So I have some examples of fast fry steak because I thought it would be great to show you what you're looking for in the grocery store. So here's a couple versions here that I'm gonna bring closer up. So this is, if this looks familiar as a steak, this is a strip loin steak that is cut into fast fry. So if I flip this sideways, you'll see how thin it is, okay? So it has a little bit of fat on the edges, 
But this one, seasoned, pan fried, absolutely delicious. So these are the steaks you'll find in steak sandwiches. So if you've had steak sandwiches in the restaurant, typically they'll use this type of steak or this is a sirloin tip. So not what we're using, we're using top sirloin. But sirloin tip is a marinating type of steak. So that typically is a steak that you might use for a roast so that you sear the outside and then you cook it in the oven. And here it's a fast fry version. So you can see it's again, nice and thin, really lean. And all you need to do is do a quick pan fry on it. So this would work in the recipe too. Now, one that's probably more common to many is the eye of round fast fry steak, okay? So I have an example of that right here. You can see it's got the shape of the eye of round and it's cut really, really thin. The reason why I didn't take this one out of the package is because I also wanted to show you, see that lovely little maple leaf right there with the triple A? That's how you know you're getting Canadian beef. And that's really important because we're supporting our local farmers that work hard for our, their families and for our families to create these delicious meals. So all these steaks could work in this recipe because they're nice and thin and we're cooking them quickly. So that's what we wanna do with our steak. Why was it in the freezer? Because the meat at room temperature is a little bit soft and it would be a little tricky for us to cut into a thinner steak. So by chilling it just for a little bit in the freezer, it firms it up and should make it easier for us to cut, okay? So here is our top sirloin grilling steak and we're gonna cut it into four pieces. So to make our life easier, we're gonna cut it crosswise first, okay? So we're gonna essentially cut it in half and try to eyeball it because one side might be a little bit larger than the other side. So you can see this is a little bit more of a, a tail end piece here. So you can just kind of guide your knife a little bit so that everybody gets about the same. Now, because we're using a double protein here, um, you don't need to have a pound or you know 16 ounces of beef because we are kind of stretching it out a little bit because we have the protein of the egg in there as well. So you can actually reduce the amount here, which is fabulous because you're getting the benefit of the protein and the lean beef as well as that creamy richness of the egg. So it goes really, really nicely together. So this is about um, 375 grams, which is perfect for the recipe. Okay, so one at a time, take your one half. And remember those skills that we just used for our onion? We're gonna use them again, but this time it's gonna be a little bit different. So I want you to hold your steak up like this because I need you to see where the halfway mark is. Okay, and you can kind of just score that a little bit with your knife. Okay, so that you can kind of see what you're doing. And then lie it back down, keep your hand on top, try to do this so that you can see what I'm doing. And then just kind of gently move your knife back and forth. And if you need to move the steak around so you can see that you're at the halfway point, you can definitely do that. Okay, all the way around. And you can lift it as you go around if that's easier for you, okay? I gotta find where my other entry point is there. And then just keep going all the way across. Now, it will still be a little bit on the thick side. If that's okay, we're gonna fix that. Let's get these into four pieces first. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing with my other half here. This one I should be able to just work all the way across because it's a little bit skinnier on the other side. There. Okay, so now I have four, still not quite fast fry steaks, but they, they, will, they will work, so not to worry. So for those of you that have a meat mallet, you can grab that if you want, um, or if you have a small saucepan, that will work too. Or because this is a tender cut of beef, you can use your hand. Okay, so I'm gonna do one at a time here. And just, I'll show you the different versions. This one with my hand, I'm just gonna pound it out a little bit. Okay. And that's just helping thin it out so that it's nice and even. Okay, so there's one version. And then I have a saucepan here. Okay, you can use a skillet if you want. You could put a little bit of parchment paper 
on your steak, or you could put a little bit of plastic wrap. I'm gonna grab a little bit of what's closer to me, parchment. Trying to remember what, oh, you know what else we could do? Let's do this, because this you can use a few times. It's a heavy duty resealable bag. So just stick that in there and pound the steak. So if you can't find something in the grocery store, it's always good to ask, especially if you are looking for a certain cut of beef, because if someone's there in the meat department, they usually can cut it for you, or they can guide you to something similar, or you can get something and then make do. And that's exactly what we're doing because it's what we were looking for, but just not quite the right thickness. This is also good for anybody who has any frustrations on a Tuesday night that you can make sure that you have some nice fast fry steak. No one has frustrations tonight though, right, Tracy? I don't know. I was going to say uh, between the onions, the crying with the onions and the pounding of the beef, we're all going to feel so good after this. <laughs> and then, and then it's, we're going to have this delicious dinner to eat, but uh, it's, it's a great way to work out any, uh, any Tuesday uh, anxieties or stresses. How's everyone doing? How's, how, how are you doing, Kate? And remember, you can unmute yourself if you have questions. How, how's it going, Sarah? We're Super well. Hard. Love awesome. it. <laughs> oh, good. And Pamela, you're doing well, too. And we've got awesome. And we've got Joyce. Joyce was there. She's out of the shot. There's Joyce. We're good, Joyce. <laughs> oh, look at put your meat up higher. Good job. Good job. That's excellent. Right, Emily? Yes, I have to I have to change my view here so that I can oh. get a closer look at everybody. There we go. Awesome. Love it. And you can just leave them right on the cutting board that you're working because we're gonna season our um, steaks before we get them into the pan. So just to make your life a little bit easier. Okay, so this is where I take a look at the recipe and make sure that I don't miss anything. Okay, well you do what, that Emily. Oh, sorry. I'm just gonna oh, let gonna... everyone know who's watching that if you are, we're gonna do a purple apron giveaway so if you are, if you, if you registered and you're watching via Zoom um, and you're on at the end of the webinar, I will pick a random name and I will ship you one of our Osteoporosis Canada Purple Unbreakable uh, aprons. So stay tuned for that. But Emily, how are you doing? I think you got everything. I think I got everything. I always like to make sure because you never know. So we are going to get cooking. This is the part that's you know, the best part, because we've done our work. Now we can just add everything to the skillet. So we are going to be making sure that we get a nice um, caramelization happening on the steaks themselves. So I want you to have a plate, a little piece of foil and some tongs handy. Okay. Because we're going to be browning them and then removing them. So remember I said those fast fry steaks do not need a lot of time to cook. So we want to brown them to build that flavor right from the get-go. And then we're gonna take them out and then put them back into the sauce. But first, seasoning. So we're going to add very simply some salt and pepper and some Italian seasoning. Italian seasoning is a mixture of different herbs like thyme, oregano, sometimes marjoram, basil. And it's fabulous because all of that works really nicely with the beef and all the other flavors that we're using in the dish. So, the recipe calls for half a teaspoon of each, but it's divided. So we're only using quarter teaspoon on our, our steak. So I'm just gonna sprinkle my salt and pepper on this side. And before I flip them, I'm going to sprinkle, we're, we need one teaspoon of our Italian seasoning. And we're going to sprinkle on that side before we flip them, okay? And I am using a neutral oil because I want all the flavor of the beef to come through and the vegetables. So I'm going to add a tablespoon of canola oil into my pan. And I am using a nonstick skillet. So you don't always need a nonstick skillet for something like this. Um, but because we're not using very much fat in it, it really does help kind of prevent things from sticking. But if you don't have a nonstick skillet, totally okay. It will 
still work. You might just have to leave the stakes in a little bit longer to create that nice caramelization happening on the outside. So I want to make sure that that's at about a medium high heat to heat up. And I'm going to flip over my steaks and we're going to season the other side. Okay. Now, a large skillet is what you'll need for this because we want to try to fit all four of these steaks inside our pan. And if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. We can do it in batches. Okay. We can do kind of two at a time. So there's my salt and pepper. And there's my Italian seasoning. Now, if you wanted to change up the flavor of this, you could still, same vegetables but change up the seasoning because this would be delicious with some herb de Provence if you had it, um, a slight twist from Italian to uh, French or Cajun seasoning if you wanted to kick it up with a little bit more heat would be really nice with the steak. Um, you could also go something a little bit different and use some curry seasoning. Um, curry spice on here would be absolutely delicious with these flavors as well. So you can really kind of just change it up or if you don't have any of the mixed spices, little thyme, basil, a little bit of cumin, anything like that would work really well with all the flavors that we have going on here, okay? So I'm just kind of putting my hand over. I feel some nice warmth in my pan and hopefully we'll get a nice little sizzle. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. And I'm going to start browning. And I hope you guys are all able to start browning. You might, I know some of you are working at your counters. You might have to go closer to your stove, which is totally okay. And now I'm gonna move this this way so that I can bring this closer. There we go. And now we're in full view. Okay, so we're just gonna brown these up. So we're looking for that nice kind of golden color to come through and this is really where you start to build flavor not only within the steaks themselves but also within the dish because that caramelization that's happening on the steak will stay in the pan and then add flavor to the sauce as well and that's really important when we're working with these one skillet meals because all that flavor is going to be in there and we want it all to come back out okay so when do we flip these we want to make sure that we get a good color on them. And another reason why we don't wanna use a lot of oil is because we don't want it splattering around. We really want to focus on getting the meat that really nice golden color. And you'll start to see with the fast fry steaks or any steak really that you're cooking is that it starts to cook on the outside on its way in. So when you look at the edges, they'll start to brown. That's a good sign. We know that it's gonna be ready to flip. Now, of course, you can always peek. There's nothing wrong with peeking. So you can go in with your little bit of tongs there and give them a little lift, okay? I want them to be fairly even. If you have an older pan, sometimes it doesn't sit flat. So you might not get an even browning, which is totally okay. But I do want them to have some golden brown on them. So I'll flip these and I'll show you what I mean, okay? Just like that. So you can see, if you take a close look there, around the edges have a little bit more deep caramelized color on them, that deeper golden. And if you're using a cast iron skillet, you definitely would get that color right through. Um, it's also an easy way to get a little added iron if you're cooking with cast iron, okay, in your diet. So we're looking to have both sides nice and golden brown. And you can't go wrong when you hear that sizzle. You know that it's already starting to smell good. I'm sure everybody's kitchen is already smelling wonderful. And if you're cooking for anybody, they might come closer into the kitchen because <laughs> they can smell the steak. I've told everybody to stay away so no one's coming in my kitchen. We don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Just a reminder for, for people, if you have questions, you can pop them in the Q&A uh, button or even in the chat, and we'll be sure to ask Emily. But Emily, let's say you don't wanna make four portions and you only wanna make two portions. I know we haven't finished the recipe, but pretty simple, right, to divide this? Yeah, yes, this recipe is super easy to divide for two people. Um, you basically would 
have the amount of steak and the eggs. However, I would actually leave the sauce the same because it just gives you more sauce. And then you can actually freeze that sauce. And that's what I wanted to tell all our make ahead lovers. Cause I know there's lots out there. I'm going to take off my steak cause I'm going to bring this closer to show you that nice caramelization that's happened in the pan. Okay. Now I also, if you are worried that you didn't um, flatten them as much as you think you should have, don't worry because we want them to go back into the sauce and finish cooking. So they, they don't have to be, you know, fully cooked at this point, but basically they are because they are quite quite thin and then just cover this with foil okay so if i wanted to make this for two people i would use just two, two fast fry steaks or in this case i would just use half of that steak um, i also want to show you this before i get a closer look in there see all those brown bits all that caramelization that is going to build so much more flavor in our sauce um, and we're going to turn down the heat to medium now Okay, because we don't want to burn anything off. And we're going to add the rest of our oil. It's another tablespoon in there to get our vegetables going. So the part that we're going to do now, which is the sauce, that then we're going to put everything back into. This is the bonus of everything that we're using, is that we can freeze it. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> That's okay. We'll just wait while Emily just has a, a quick break right there. How's everyone doing? We're Emily, you want me to take good. over? <laughs> yes, there we go. Oh. Kate, you can take over. How's it going? I'm good now. My my coughing fit is over. That's that's the, the juice is popping up. So now I can add my vegetables. You know how sometimes that little tickle in the back of your throat, you're like, no, oh, it's gonna go away. Didn't go away. It may come back, just so you know. So once your pan is, it should technically still be hot because, you know, we just browned the, um, the steak in there. So we reduced it to medium and that's because we want to soften our vegetables. And also that little bit of liquid that is in our pepper and onion is going to come out of the, out of the vegetables um, and help release all that caramelized brown bits from the steak in there. So you can see how nice it gets lovely and coated. So Really what we are doing is softening our vegetables. Now, if your pan is still a little too hot, you'll get a little bit of color on here too, which is not a bad thing. So don't worry about that. It will just add a little bit more flavor to it, okay? But you do wanna be stirring this. Because I've diced everything up um, on the fairly small side, it shouldn't take long, about three, five minutes to get nice and soft. If you happen to chop everything a little bit larger, it may take just a little bit longer to soften them, okay? So there's really no right or wrong, whether you chop them larger or smaller. Um, it's just about the timing. So if you're trying to speed things up, sometimes you chop things smaller, but then you have to remember, it may take you a little bit longer to get there because you're chopping everything smaller. So the prices you have to pay for, you know, an easy dinner. All right, so tomatoes. How's everybody doing? You got your onions. I see everybody stirring. So I think we're good. Everyone's on the stove. Tomatoes, petite cut tomatoes. They are small diced tomatoes. So that means that they're jam packed in this, in this 19 ounce can. It's a smaller can size um, that works beautifully for a dish like this because it's not big chunks of tomato. Now, if you wanted to use fresh tomatoes, you definitely could. You can even use grape tomatoes here. You'd need a couple cups. The only difference if you're using fresh tomatoes is you won't get as much juice in there where you were getting that lovely juice in these tomatoes, but also they're seasoned a little bit. They have, these ones that I have, have a little bit of garlic and oil in them that will only benefit, you know, the dish that we're making. You could get petite cut tomatoes that are stewed, that have some onions and celery in them. You can get Italian seasoned, you can get um, chili season. So you could really just change up again the flavor of this dish based on the tomatoes that you use. Now, if you really want to go crazy, you can actually use salsa for this recipe. I know, I just blew everybody's mind. You can use a jar of salsa. And if you want to spice it up, hot salsa or just add hot pepper flakes. It's easier to a mild or medium salsa. 
and you can do the exact same thing. So it's really all about cost. We're actually using quite value um, rich dish or ingredients. And by value rich, I mean, it's basically saving some money for you in the sense that we're using cuts that have value because they're typically a little less expensive, but we're extending them by, again, using a thinner steak and having a full meal. So things like canned tomatoes definitely do that as well. You know, you're only paying a dollar for the tomatoes where salsa might run you a little bit more. So I always love having the option. Okay, so I have some nice color. I've picked up a lot of golden brown from the bottom of the pan. So if I look at the bottom, what I showed you earlier, and I'll lift it up here again, it's all gone, okay? And that's why the vegetables have this golden color because from the bottom of the pan, it's there. So I'm gonna add my tomatoes in here, okay? Juice and all. And then we want to also add our basil. And remember I told you about the remaining salt and pepper, the other quarter teaspoon of salt and pepper? That's gonna go in here too. And that's really just to have everything seasoned nicely. Um, if you don't use a lot of salt at home, by all means, you can leave the salt out here because we are using canned tomatoes that do have some salt in them. Um, but I like to have it balanced and seasoned together. So that's why I split up the salt and pepper. So in goes my basil, that nice bit of freshness. No, I actually turn this back on. I don't think I had a flame under there. And then the rest of the salt and pepper, I'm going to put in there too. So as I said, if you wanted to spice this up, this would be a great place to add some hot pepper flakes if you wanted to do that. Um, or even just some, a splash of hot sauce would be really nice. I know some people like to have that kick when they're enjoying some tomato -y dishes. All right. So we're going to let this cook away just for a little bit while we get our eggs and our toast ready, okay? Um, and you want to make sure that you leave this uncovered because we don't want it to be too liquidy. We want this to be fairly hearty and, and almost thick um, so that we get more of a, a salsa consistency in the end, which is really nice. All right, so I'm just gonna leave that there while we talk about our egg, our second protein in here, which is our large eggs that we're using. And we're using four. So I am making this for four. Um, if I, again, if I was using two, this amount of sauce is a little extra for two, but again, I just make the whole batch. And what you can do is actually, before you slip the eggs and the steaks in, you can actually take out half of this sauce and freeze it. Because guess what? You can make the other two steaks another time, which is fabulous. Or you can actually put all four steaks in, take them out, freeze two, and then all you have to do is thaw them because this, this not only can be steak and egg, it could be great for a saucy steak sandwich. So if you don't want the egg, if you just want a delicious steak sandwich, this will do the trick because then you can put some cheese on it, stick it in a bun and you have a delicious meal. So the versatility with this dish is fabulous. I love how many ways you can use it. This also has a little bit of a pizzaiolo feel, which is an Italian dish that has almost like a pizza style sauce, the flavoring. So you could actually chop up these fast fried steaks, stir it into this dish, and then serve it with pasta if you wanted to. So do you see how this kind of one meal has now been created into about three or four? Technically, you could eat this dish all week long and it would, could be different if you wanted to, okay? So I'm gonna let that simmer away. Our eggs are here. And what I like to do, because we are gonna be slipping the eggs right into this mixture, I know some people don't feel comfortable kind of getting into their saucepan because it's the steam, it gets quite hot. So what I recommend that you do is take your eggs in a little bowl or a custard cup and you can crack them one at a time into your bowl so that when it's time for us to add the egg, we can tilt this in much easier than getting in there and cracking it. Also, if any shells happen, they'll happen here that you can take them out before they get into the dish itself, okay? So this is when we're going to also get our toast ready. So we are using sourdough bread. You could use any bread here. You could also just use a nice panini bun too, if you wanted. Um, so you can slice your bread and toast it. I have my bread already sliced. 
And I'm just gonna put it in the toaster. You can put it in the oven, you can broil it. You don't have to toast it, but I love the contrast of the texture of the crunch of the bread and the sauciness. Now, I actually don't like having the toast hot. This is just a personal. So if you guys want your toast hot, you might wanna wait a little bit longer, but I actually like the toast to be kind of more room temperature. I find that it absorbs more of the sauce. There's no logic to this other than the fact that I find it easier to eat. So I am gonna put it in my toaster. This is not, you know, anything super fancy. I also like my toast just a little extra toasty. Um, so you can toast your bread as you like. Okay. Emily, we have a couple of questions. And I mean, one of my questions is about the toast, but we'll talk about that later. Because uh, I know I have a long list of peculiarities about food. And so now I know yours is toast. <laughs> I have other ones. But I just, um, I wanted to let you know. So Nancy from Thunder Bay says that she's enjoying watching everybody cooking. And she said that this is going to be her meal tomorrow. So we're excited about that. And Jan is also enjoying her time. But we had two questions. Um, so if if people, let's say, don't like peppers who you're cooking for, but you do, could you cook the peppers separately and then add them in just in your portion in the end? That's a great question. And that is something that a lot of people struggle with in regards to all types of vegetables and who likes what, especially if you're cooking for family members or perhaps someone who's outside the home that you're dropping food off to and they're not you know, they don't like the same thing. So what you can do is actually start off with your onions and garlic, put the tomatoes in, put the basil in, have it as a tomato sauce, essentially. And then what you can do is saute off whatever vegetables you like that the other people don't like. Could be peppers, could be mushrooms, could be zucchini, and just saute them off separately and then stir them into your portion. So, or put it on top of the dish afterwards. Steak and mushrooms, you cannot go wrong with steak and mushrooms unless you don't like mushrooms, which there's a lot of people, believe it or not, that don't like mushrooms. In this dish, it would be fabulous. But again, you might be coming into, well, I don't like mushrooms. So saute them off. And you can actually have these vegetables in the fridge ready to go, already cooked, and add them to different things. So it kind of bulks up your meal a little bit, and it gives you what you're looking for. The other thing that you can do is use vegetables that are jarred. So think roasted red peppers artichoke, any type of antipasto. So if it's like a muffaletta, which is a mix of olives and different types of pickled vegetables. I know for some people it might be kind of out of their regular repertoire, but it just increases the flavor. And all these types of things go really well with beef and they go really well with eggs. So what you're doing is, oh, I see Pamela's got muffaletta mix and that's perfect. So this is a dish, that's something that you could spoon in here and it would totally work. It would be delicious. Pickled hot peppers, absolutely wonderful in here. So if you just kind of open up your pantry or fridge, it, your options are really endless, provided that you have these things in your fridge or your pantry. If you don't, simple is okay. If you just have to make this as a tomato sauce to get everybody to try it out and eat it, then the next time try adding something. So maybe add that pepper next time and see how it goes. Because you know, sometimes if you don't experience it, you don't really know if you don't like it or not. How much um, macaletta would you add, Emily? Um, I would add easily, because it's four, I would add about a quarter of a cup, like a tablespoon per person in here would be lovely. Um, if it's the spicy one, you might want to just add a couple tablespoons, taste it first, and then go from there. Because um, there are two different types of macaletta. There's a mild version and a spicy one. So Again, it's, it's sometimes dependent on how much heat your family can handle. But that's a, and that's wonderful because you can also add some later too as you have the egg and kind of spoon it on top. So that's, that's a great fit. Was there another question, Tracy? Um, well, somebody asked a general question around steak, like what's your, your favorite type of steak? But I think, you know, to use is basically, you know, it could be, depend on what you're cooking, right? Because if you're making this, we've already talked about the fast fry steaks, but if you're just going to, um, you know, cook a steak, you may choose to have a different cut, whatever your favorite one is. I think it's a lot That's about true. preference, right? And what you're cooking. It is, it is totally. And the great part is, is when you are going into that section where all the beef is, 
you can take a look, they kind of have grouped things together, right? So they have all the things that are more tender grill, grilling steaks together. So think tenderloin, sirloin, strip loin, ribeye, all those steaks are kind of together. Then you go over to that marinating section where things are pot roast, you know, think laid, flank, all those types that, you know, might take a little bit longer, but they do have the capability of cooking quickly. But if you're unsure, you can always ask, you can always go to the Canada Beef website because there's tons of information there. Think Beef also has tons of information. So you can go there and kind of say, you know, I bought this steak, I don't really know what to do. Put it in the search bar and recipes will come up. And that's the great part. You can go through and see, you know, the information's at our fingertips. So you can kind of see what flavors you wanna use, what you have in the fridge and go from there, which is, I think, super amazing because you know we weren't always able to do that <laughs> so I'm going to put our steaks back in and what you should notice I'm going to show you over here all this delicious juice that has to go in the skillet because that's going to add tons of flavor okay so I'm going to put our steaks back in but remember you have to leave some room because we've got to put those eggs in there too so I'm going to kind of fan them out so that I can tuck the eggs in kind of four little spots around there. Okay, so those are gonna go in, nestle them in, and then I'm gonna start adding my eggs in these spots. So hopefully everyone's at the same point. So I'm gonna tuck in one egg right in there. And then I'm going to crack the other ones. Now, if you want to, you can also scooch over your steak here and make a nice little hole. That's where another one's going to go. Okay. And I like to crack my eggs on something, not necessarily the bowl, to help prevent the shell from ending up in there. Okay? And I am using large eggs. If you have medium eggs, totally will work. If you have extra large eggs, might take a little bit longer to cook. Okay, put this guy in and then move the steak over and then I should have room for one more egg in here. Now, let's say you just wanna have steak and no egg. You don't have to put the eggs in. Um, or you, maybe only two of you want eggs. Just put two eggs in, okay? There's versatility here for this dish. So you can do what suits you. So once those eggs are in, we wanna make sure that we're able to cook them. And I, you, now if you like them sunny side up, you don't have to cover them, but I like to cover them. It also speeds up the cooking, keeps them nice. So think over easy. Um, it tends to steam the eggs in a nice, almost poaching them in this flavorful sauce, really. Okay. So this is where you control your destiny of how you want your eggs done. If you like, um, you know, sunny side up eggs, you won't obviously cook them as long. Um, I like mine kind of around the four or five minute mark so that they're almost cooked through, but I still like them runny. My toast is ready. I'm going to grab my toast so that it has the opportunity to cool. I only made a couple pieces because everybody else might want their toast hot. <laughs> All right, and then we are also gonna add one of my favorite cheeses is some feta, okay? And if you saved those small basil leaves like I did, I'm gonna just pick some of those off because I'm going to add those as well. And that just gives it a nice little bit of freshness at the end. Now the feta, you wanna make sure it's crumbled, but if you don't want to use feta, you don't have to, but it really does kind of help season the overall dish. This would be equally as delicious with um, old cheddar, if you wanted to use that instead. Um, you could also, if you want something a little bit more pungent, some crumbled blue cheese would be amazing in this as well, okay? So let's go back to if we wanted to freeze this. If we wanted to freeze this, or make, let's say it's just you tonight for dinner. You don't have to cook the eggs in here, okay? Cook the, the steak fully with the sauce, take out your one steak, you can fry an egg and have it alongside. 
and then you can freeze all the other portions. Um, I've frozen this type of dish with eggs in it. I don't really like the texture of the eggs when they come out. They're fine, you can totally do it. So if you're kind of making your meals and portioning them out, you could definitely do that. Um, so you can take out your steak, your egg, with some of the sauce, package it, make sure it's at room temperature first before you tuck it in the freezer. And then you can thaw it overnight in the fridge and just warm it up in a skillet or in the microwave and you can enjoy it. So it does have the capability to be frozen. Eggs do freeze fairly well. It's just for me a personal thing. I'm not necessarily, <laughs> I'd rather fry a fresh egg, which takes about less than a minute um, and then just serve it on top, which gets quite easy. Oh, I should take a look here because these are just about done. Um, but you can see the whites are set and um, it's kind of like an over easy egg. You don't want it kind of bubbling too much, so I'm just gonna turn this down a little bit. Um, and if I kind of poke this, it's still really, really runny. I'm just gonna let it cook for another minute or so. Now, if you want the feta to be a little bit gooey or whatever cheese that you're using, you can actually add it at this point and let it melt a little bit in there, okay? I think I'll put some in now and then I'll put the rest in later when I go to serve it, just like that. How's everybody doing? Does it smell good in the house? I hope so. I hope you have people that are gonna wanna eat it. <laughs> I know not everybody is into kind of breakfast for dinner, but I love it. I think it's a fabulous way to have dinner. All right. Do we have any other questions from anyone, Tracy? No, just we had a couple on Facebook just saying how much they like the combination of meat and eggs. And so I think if you're unfamiliar with that, it's something where in, in certain cuisines, it's actually fairly common. And for other people, I mean, it's something new, but it, it's delicious. And this is why you can have this at any time of day, right? I mean, steak exactly. and eggs for breakfast is on the menu in and many of this place. Yes. And um, a couple of the restaurants I worked at many, many moons ago, steak and eggs was probably one of the most popular um, breakfasts, especially um, we had a lot of truck drivers that came in and they were kind of getting ready for their day. So they wanted to kind of, they didn't want something starchy. They wanted protein to kind of keep them going and beef definitely does that. And then with the combination of eggs, it just kind of carries you over. And then because we have the vegetables in here with the sauce, you kind of you kind of feel full and it's not a feeling of fullness that's uncomfortable it's a feeling of i'm full and this is going to keep me going for a while that's what protein does which is fabulous um if you take a look um and i know tracy mentioned it right off the get-go there's 42 grams of protein in this dish per serving so that's a great way to start your day or for lunch or for dinner and especially if you are very active or if you're looking for more lean proteins this is a great dish to have. So, and again, it's not just this dish. We talked about some of those other ways to prepare it, whether you cut up those fast fried steaks and have it with pasta or serve it over rice, or you can tuck it into that sandwich and have it as like a saucy steak on a bun. So there's lots of versatility here when you think about this combination or not the combination, even just the steak and the sauce. The eggs are just to me almost like an added bonus because when you cut into it, especially if you don't, if you leave that yolk a little runny, it's like an, a surprise sauce that you get in there, which is fabulous. Okay, I think we're good. So I'm gonna scoop some out. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of basil, my small basil leaves on here. And I have made this with cilantro for the cilantro lovers out there. It's so yummy. There we go. I'm gonna grab a plate. Well, Emily plates has everyone is everyone done with their dish. I'm looking I'm looking and to see how you guys doing. Let's just see here. How's it going Pamela and Sarah. Oh, I see steam. We're good. That yeah, looks steam good. Is good. That's a, yeah, that's you guys can song. unmute yourself. Yeah, if you want. And there's also Kate and Joyce. How's it going? Yeah, I'll I'll a little longer. Okay, a little bit. Okay, no problem. Yeah, maybe you know, a minute. <laughs> oh. oh, Emily, that looks No, I can't fine. see. I lift up the computer. <laughs> well, the... 
So you can serve it. Yeah, we're going to show you our side. You see it? Oh, oh that's awesome. Go. That looks great, Joy. I didn't drop it on the floor. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, the, the weight of skillets when they're full can be pretty, pretty hefty. That's, that's no lie. So all I did was take out one of the steaks with an egg and my toast. And it's, it's ready to go. You can dig in right away. And if you, again, if you didn't want the toast, you could serve this with a little bit of rice. You could eat it just on its own with the salad and it would be absolutely delicious. So it does have that wonderful ability to um, be changed up as you want. And Emily, we're gonna ask you to do the shot. We always ask Emily to, to have a taste I know, but can I take it? It looks so pretty. Can I take a picture of it? First? Yes, you can. You go right ahead and you do that. <laughs> Who else takes photos of their food? I do. <laughs> well, po I'll post it after so that everyone can see it, but it's, it's legit. I actually did it. Well, you can see that I did it. It's right here. There we go. Um, I need, this is definitely a knife and fork dish. There's no question. Did you want to cut into that steak? And I, I'm hoping that, let's see if I have the egg close enough here that it'll be gooey. Oh, I maybe cooked it a little too much. Oh no, there's a little bit of goo in there. Okay, so that's what I meant when that little bit of extra sauce with the yolk. So if you don't cook it, you know, that four to five minute mark, that three minute mark, you'll probably still get some nice oozing of the egg. I'm gonna just whoop, put that up here on my steak. And then each bite that you have, you make sure that you get a little bit of everything. It's also very hot, Tracy. So it's going to be one of those. I ones know, that made, I know. It may burn my mouth. <laughs> we don't, we always ask Emily right as soon as it comes out of a hot oven or stove to go <laughs> quick, taste it and tell us all how it is. But I'm pretty sure we all know how it is. But it looks delicious. The best part about this is that the steak is tender because we didn't overcook it. It's just that browning, getting the flavor in there. It gets some of the sauce flavor because essentially then we finish it in the sauce. The eggs have lots of flavor because they're poached in that liquid as well. And then when you eat it with the bread, I'm not gonna bite into the bread because that'll be super crunchy, but that combination, it's textural and pleasant. So I love having, all the textures. So that the tenderness of the steak, the creaminess of the egg, and the tenderness of the vegetables, because we did cook them to get soft enough. So that's really important too. And I love that little bit of cheese on top because it just finishes it off. It just has that nice little bit of, of saltiness, which is perfect, I think. Absolutely. And I think what we always strive to do with the recipes that we share is really about the versatility because we want people to be able to cook and we want people, and I apologize, it's so dark. There's three lamps on in here. I don't know what's happening. Uh, always like this. Um, so, but we want people to cook and make sure that they're getting the bone building nutrients that they need and also to have it be delicious. And I mean, we've done so much cooking, right? Over the last two years, we need some new ideas. I know I certainly do. So uh, we're always looking for something fresh to, to uh, get to. So before we wrap up, we have a little bit more to do. Just want to thank and Pamela and Joyce and Sarah and Kate. And thank you so much for cooking along with us today. And we hope you have a delicious meal. As always, the rest of us, we're going to have to do it on our own. We don't have smell vision and we don't have uh, the ability to get this delivered to our house. I did want to let the lucky winner know the person who's going to win the apron. It is, uh, wait, sorry, I'm going to tell you who it is in one second. It's Glenna McLeod from Montreal. So Glenna, I'm going to email you. I'm going to get your information. Congrats. You're getting Congrats. the apron. And so give me one second. We're going to do a quick just share some information. So what we did want to say is first, thank you to everyone who participated, but we have more cook-alongs that are coming up with Osteoporosis Canada. So the groceries are delivered by Longos, just so you know where the groceries are getting delivered. So how this all works is in Ontario, we've chosen specific locations. And for each recipe, so the one that's coming up at the end of November is the salmon noodle casserole, take on a classic dish instead of tuna we're using salmon and that will be in Kitchener so if you live in Kitchener if you know someone who lives in Kitchener um, they are actually able to register now 
And then we have other recipes. We have another Think Beef recipe coming up in February, and we have two other cook-alongs in March. Um, and for those, you can actually put your name on a list. And when registration opens, we will definitely let you know so that you can register. Spaces are limited for that. Um, and so for everyone else, though, if you don't live in those areas, or if you don't want to cook along and you just want to watch, you can register at no charge uh, to watch any of those webinars so that you can learn about the techniques. We're even going to teach you in March how to make homemade spinach ricotta gnocchi because those are great to keep in your freezer and they have calcium and protein and a great shakshuka recipe as also at the end of March. Um, if you would like to get access to any of these registration um, sites or to be able to put your name on the list so we can contact you, just visit osteoporosis.ca forward slash cook along. So it's right up on the screen. And there's other information that we want to share. So when you get on our website, you can get the Calculate Your Calcium tool. We have a podcast. And if you don't know about it, there's lots of great podcasts on there that you can listen to uh, via your uh, favorite provider, or you can listen based uh, right from our website. We also have the Know Your Risk Quiz. And this webinar, along with all our other webinars that are recorded, you can find them all on the OC Replay webpage. So you can go back if you want to watch this again. If you miss something, um, you can watch our other uh, webinars as well on a variety of topics, including um, you know, bone health, uh, myths on um, breaking myths on, on osteoporosis, exercise, lots of other topics. Definitely want to thank our partners again, thinkbeef.ca, and of course, Emily Richards, who always hosts a fabulous webinar for us. And we want to thank our cook along participants who joined us today and are going to be enjoying their delicious, delicious uh, meal. We want to thank the people that are watching via Zoom, and we want to thank the people that are watching on Facebook, and thank everyone. If you would like to have information sent directly to your inbox, when you get on the homepage of our website, you can subscribe by clicking the top uh, button at the top of the webpage, and you'll get our e-newsletter. You can always stay connected through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And um, just again, thank you so much to everyone. I hope you all had fun. I hope you all were able to learn a new technique or have a new idea about cooking with bone building nutrients and getting the calcium and protein you need. That's it for us tonight. Hope everyone has a great evening. Stay connected, stay well. And until next time, enjoy. Take care, everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy your dinner. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.